Hey everybody, Mike here. In this short video, we're gonna talk a little bit about how the Federation traffic flow works. And I know this is a very hot topic for a lot of you that are maybe familiar with the concepts of NSXT, but you're not sure how that really fits when you add multiple locations. Routing is always a topic, so we're not gonna get too much into routing in this video. In the next one, we will talk about that a bit more. There's some design choices you have to make which will influence routing. But that said, let's get into it. All right, so first I wanna talk about non-Federation east-west traffic. What does it look like if I'm just doing NSX within one site? In this case, we have one location, we have Paris right here, and we have three vSphere hosts. In this case, we only have two VMs. We have one VM on this host, one VM on this host. We have our edge cluster here, which is again our on-off ramp for NSX. So if we're on an overlay network, then that is basically the spot where we hit before we get into kind of the real network, AKA non-overlay network or the physical network. Then we also have these TEP IPs or tunnel endpoints, and these are just VM kernels in the case of vSphere. And these are dedicated interfaces, they're just layer three IPs essentially, that the host is using to terminate these overlay tunnels. So what normally happens with east-west traffic, so let's say this VM here wants to talk to this VM right here, what would normally happen is this host, there is the VMware installation bundles on the host that allow NSX to do its magic. So because that VM is connected to an NSX port group, it knows that it needs a little bit extra treatment versus maybe a standard port group. So what happens is it then does a route lookup, it looks through the distributed firewall, all of that stuff, that all happens within this host. And it'll then say, okay, well, I know this other VM I'm trying to reach is on this host right here. So this host will encapsulate it and send it via Geneve, so it'll be UDP port 6081, and it will send it with a source and destination IP of this TEP and this TEP IP. And keep in mind that original packet is encapsulated, so the original packet is still intact. When it gets to this host, that host will unencapsulate it and pass it off to the VM, and they think they're on the same switch. And the return path is exactly the same. Now, keep in mind the point here is there's no involvement of the edge nodes. Big caveat here, the edge nodes would be involved if we're doing any kind of stateful uh, services like NAT, for example. There are scenarios where even in this case, traffic would go to the edge cluster first before coming down to this host. So it's one of those things, it just depends on your situation, but just normal east-west will say, this is what it looks like. Now let's look at what it looks like in a federation deployment. So first, just to get our bearings here, I've mistakenly put two locations that are the same name. They both say Paris, so let's just prevent, pretend this one is something different. Now, if we see here, we have an edge cluster at both sites. We have a TEP IP for each edge node, and we have something new called an RTEP, or Remote Tunnel Endpoint. And we've got one of these for each edge node. I'm sure that'll change at some point, but that's how it is today. Now, if you were paying attention in the last slide, you'd be tempted at this point to say, well, Mike, traffic is probably, it probably does, you know, the distributive firewall lookup, the route lookup, all that, and probably routes it like this. So a source of this TEP, destination of this TEP, even if they're in the same segment, that's what we're talking about, east-west. So when they're in the same segment, even if they weren't in the same segment, it doesn't really matter. They're not going to go like this. You would be tempted to think that that's the case because that's how it works with NSX within a single site, but that's not it. The way it works in a federation deployment is that traffic would be sent to the edge cluster within your local site, and that edge cluster, one of the edge nodes, whichever one received that packet, would actually re-encapsulate that packet and use its source RTEP and a destination RTEP IP over here for that new Geneva encapsulation. So it's not a double encapsulation, it's actually taking off the original encapsulation and re-encapsulating it and sending it over to that other site as we see here. So it's still Geneva traffic, but it is source and destination of these RTEP IPs, not these TEPs or not these TEPs. Once it gets to the destination site, it's pretty straightforward. That encapsulation is stripped and it's then basically re-encapsulated and sent on its way to wherever it was supposed to go in the first place. In this case, that would be this TEP right here. So that's how Federation East-West works. Now, what about non-Federation? Let's talk about North-South a bit. So non-Federation, again, we're back to not doing any Federation. This is one location. This is really easy. In a nutshell, if you're on an overlay segment in NSX, all traffic will go to your edge nodes and then out to the internet or out to wherever they're trying to go from there. That's pretty much a universal rule if you're on an overlay network. Now, if you're on a VLAN back segment, none of this applies. You would be using the default physical gateway, wherever that is on your network, that's what you would be using. So none of this would apply for VLAN back segments. Just keep that in mind. 
Now, what about for federation? And this is the part you probably joined the video for, and guess what? I'm gonna say it really just depends. Unfortunately, there's so many scenarios with north, south, and multiple locations that I just can't go over them all in this video. But the good news is we are going to stretch a T0 and I'm gonna show you some of those options and some of those design choices. So we're gonna basically focus really heavy on north, south in the next episode, lesson, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna focus on it, I promise. So that said, I hope this was helpful. I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. Until next time, take care.